Does new educational technology using the same pedagogy really make no significant difference to student learning outcomes? This was the topic of debate between two heavyweights in the EdTech world back in 1994. Richard Clark and Robert Cosma engaged in a public debate about the effectiveness of EdTech and multimedia learning that is famous in EdTech circles. But let's be very clear that the debate about educational technology in general is not a new debate. The debate goes back at least to Socrates, who thought that allowing students to use books, which was the newfangled educational technology of his day, was a bad idea because it would diminish their memory. And you know what? He was probably right, but didn't realize how large the positive impact that books would have in educating a broader audience and transmitting information more reliably over time. But back to the 1994 version of the EdTech debate, Clark argued that the media or the technology are mere vehicles that deliver instruction in the same way that the type of truck delivering our groceries doesn't change the nutritional value of the groceries. If you think of it in terms of how the technology available when he was first starting to think about this in the mid-1980s, you can see why that the argument made sense back then. Whether you watched a lecture in person or on a VHS videotape, the same information is being communicated in roughly the same format, typically a lecture. Cosma countered that while Clark's argument is often correct, if the media or technology are going to influence learning, media must be designed to give us powerful new methods, and our methods must take appropriate advantage of the medium's capabilities. So to summarize, it's not the media or the technology that influences the learning, it's how that technology is used that impacts learning. So compare the old telephone with a modern smartphone. A smartphone doesn't significantly improve on the voice call quality, but a smartphone can also browse the web, listen to music, it can allow you to read books, conduct video conferences, navigate on land, sea, or air, collaboratively edit documents, or DJ a party. The new smartphone technology definitely gives us powerful new methods, as Cosma put it. When Clark defended his argument that the delivery of media for instruction usually doesn't make a difference, the technological landscape was much different. VHS videotapes were the primary means of watching on-demand educational videos, MS-DOS was the dominant operating system, and dial-up modems using phone lines were state-of-the-art internet access. And Microsoft Word looked like this. I suspect that in his era, Clark's assessment of the technology that technology doesn't improve instruction was true almost all of the time. On the other hand, with 20 plus years of maturation and significant improvements in bandwidth, hardware speed, and authoring tool usability improvements, I would argue that the technology is now in a position to make a large positive impact in the delivery of instruction by enabling new pedagogical approaches to instruction, like blended learning, which is a mix of face-to-face -face and online instruction, as well as problem-based learning with virtual simulations and collaboration. We have increasingly realistic simulation hardware and software like medical simulators, Oculus Rift virtual reality goggles, weird looking telepresence robots, and MakerBot 3D printers to help bring our visual virtual creations into the physical world. While the passage of time has been kind to the pro-technology arguments of Cosma, it's important to remember that Clark was correct in arguing that no matter what the new educational technology we use, if we don't also change pedagogy, the educational outcomes will stay roughly the same. Of course, there are other reasons to implement ed tech other than to improve student performance, things like broadening access to education, using live and recorded videos for off-campus students, for example, as well as streamlining administration and saving money one example of this is this pretty awful PowerPoint slide. But when you consider the technology that came just before it, 
which is the overhead projector, it starts to make sense why someone would just put text on their PowerPoint slide, because it came from the transparency slide that the technology before it had to use. So in this example, what are some other potential uses for video projectors? Well, one way it could be used would be with video conferencing. Attach a camera to the laptop that's projecting the, the video and you have a video conference set up. One way that I've seen a professor use this is she would assign readings from a textbook or journal articles and then have the author of the, the text that they are reading come and speak to them and answer questions. And letting students know that they are going to be talking to and asking questions of the author of what they're reading in preparation for class significantly changes the, uh, the experience of reading and the engagement level as you read knowing that you'll be meeting the author and you'll be to ask them questions.